Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Greg and in this video we're going to be talking about interface recipes and how you can use them for your own interface designs. Now interface recipes are powerful, right? They're components and dynamic expressions that have been brought together for really cool features that you can add to your interfaces. So when we explore interface recipe, we first want to go to our documentation. So here we are, we're on our documentation and you can see all the interface recipes by clicking on quick links and interface recipes. Now I already have an interface recipe here, configure a chart drill down to a grid. So let's talk about this one and then we'll go into how we can adapt it for our own use. So here we have a column chart and this column chart uh, gives us the ability to show information at a high level to our users, business users, but they can also click on one of these columns and display a grid below, right? The ability to drill down and learn more about that information. Now, if I scroll down even further, I have the expression that was uh, used to create this uh, recipe. And all we're gonna do is copy and paste it into our own interface and then adapt it to make it work. So here I have that here. I've already copied and pasted this recipe and now we're going to look at it, break it down and update it so it works with our data. So as you can tell, we're getting errors, right? Recipes aren't designed for your data, right? They're just placeholders, recipes, right? Where you're just gonna modify and change it to work with what you need uh, for your use case, right? So let's talk about what we're seeing and then we'll go back and we'll update it. So from top down, let's talk about what we see here. First, we have a local variable, local bank selection, right? This is a placeholder, it's currently empty. Eventually, we're gonna save a value into it, which is gonna be referenced again later in this interface. So we'll talk about that. We also have our section layout and our column chart field. Now the column chart is gonna be pulling its data from a record in this case, record type case. Now we don't have a record type titled case, right? This was pulled from the recipe. So we're gonna to have to modify and change that. We also have a filter. What information are we gonna bring back from this record? Again, this field doesn't exist because this record doesn't exist. So we're gonna to have to modify this as well. And then we have the information specific for this column chart. So the groupings and the measures, right? What information is gonna be displayed in the columns? What's the quantity of that data? So when we talk about grouping, we have primary and secondary groupings, and then we have measures for the count. We're gonna to have to modify those. We scroll down a little bit here, we have a link field. Now this link field is simply gonna display a back button. So after a user clicks on a column from the column chart, they are shown the grid, and this link will give them an opportunity to go back to the column chart. And then finally, we have the grid field, right? Now the grid is gonna be getting its data from a record, in this case, record type case. And it's gonna be filtered by this information, and then it's gonna display that information in grid columns. Now, like I said, this is a recipe. It's filled with placeholder information that we're gonna to have to update and change to fit our needs. So to start off with, we're gonna start with the column chart field and updating our record type. So for our purpose, we're gonna be displaying a column chart of vehicle makes, right? So we have a lot of different vehicles um, in our uh, fleet of vehicles, and we wanna be able to display them in this column chart. So first, this record type will become my AA vehicle record. Now, I'm not going to be filtering that data in the purpose of this column chart. I don't need to filter it. So I can actually just erase or just delete this entire filter parameter. We don't need that. Now we have the uh, column chart configurations here with primary and secondary groupings. I don't need to uh, have two different groupings. I'm only going to be doing it by vehicle make, so I don't need two of them. So I'll go ahead and delete one of these because I don't need it, but I am going to change this one to be my vehicle make field, right? 
because that's what we want to display. We want to display the columns by vehicle make. And I'm going to change this alias to make. We'll see how we're going to use that later. Now the measure is normally going to be our primary key. So we're going to change this to be just that. So again, we're going to modify this and change it to our vehicle ID. And we'll keep the alias as ID count. All right. So you can see that our column chart has appeared. It's looking great, but I know it's not done yet. If I was to click on one of these columns, it's going to attempt to display the grid, which we have not yet configured. And, you know, here we go. We got an error. But we do get some information here and by way of our local variable, local bank selection. So remember, we talked about that. So if I open up local bank selection, you'll notice the value is now make dodge, because that's what I clicked, and the ID count or the, uh, the number of these items. There's 19 items in dodge. Now that's going to come into play later in the grid. So let's keep going down and let's go into our grid. So again, when you click on one of those columns, we want to be able to see a grid of those specific vehicles. So in this case, of all of my Dodge vehicles. So I want my record to be the same vehicle record. After all, that's where the data is. And the filter, I don't need two filters because all I'm doing is filtering by vehicle make specifically the one I select, which is Dodge, right? So I only want to return the Dodge vehicles or the Chevrolet vehicles or the Ford vehicles, whatever it is I select uh, from my column chart. So we're gonna go ahead and modify this and I'm gonna filter by my make field and the value that it's going to filter by is whatever it is I click in that local bank selection, but it's not type, it's make, right? We can see that over here on the right-hand side, underneath local variable, local selection, make, right? So we want this to be dot make. Okay. So now the grid is able to go out, get the appropriate data and bring it back. You will also notice the error has now changed to something else. In this case, the error is talking about these guys down below, the grid columns themselves. Now, what I could do is I could go ahead and modify each and every one of these grid columns so it works with my needs. But what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna erase them. So let me just go ahead and collapse each and every one of these grid columns. And I'm just gonna delete most of them. I'll leave, the, I'll leave one there and then I'll uncollapse it. And for this one, we'll go ahead and call this one uh, the VIN, right? The vehicle identification number. And so are we going to sort by the vehicle identification number? Does that make sense? Probably not. So I'll delete that one. But we do need the value. Now the value is going to be the VIN, right? For that row. So I want this to be vehicle dot VIN, right? Now, when you see FV bang row, that essentially means go to that row of that data and display the value in that cell. So remember when we're talking about the record type, it's going out, it's getting data, it's bringing it back. The data that it brings back are columns and rows. And the way this grid field is constructed is it's creating one row for each item in that array that it brought back in the record. So FE bang row is simply saying, go to that row, the row that you're currently on, which is one vehicle, and display the field that I give it, in this case, VIN. So if I scroll down to the right over here, do, 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 you can see we've got the VIN and we have each VIN, which is 19 vehicles. Right, so over here we have ID count 19, we should have 19, and there we have, we have 19. So if I wanted another grid, right, I could just copy this one, another grid column. I could just copy this one, paste it, and maybe we want the year, 
All right, so we'll just update this field to be year. And we'll go ahead and do that. And so now we have the year column. So I could keep adding additional columns. Maybe I'll change some columns to be rich text or icons, or maybe uh, links directly to the record. I have lots of different opportunities available to me. I just configure it right here uh, in expression mode. So adapting uh, interface recipes can be pretty easy and straightforward. You just wanna be able to look at the expression, understand what is it doing, so that way you know what to change so it works for your use cases. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.